Hey guys, I'm so Heidi, so happy to have you here. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your continued support. Uh, this is video three of my Getting Started in Illustrator series. So if you haven't got caught up on videos one and two, that would be a great place to start because we're gonna pick up right where we left off. All right, let's dive right in. In the last video, we learned about grouping and aligning objects in Illustrator. So we grouped our four buttonholes and we aligned them perfectly to the center of our button. Now I wanna talk about a few other essential things within Illustrator. So let's zoom out a little bit, Command or Control minus to do that. And we will kind of move our position on the artboard. We've drawn quite a giant button. Look at how large it is in relation to our sheet of paper. That's okay. Um, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna draw another button and I'm gonna say this one, let's just grab our lips tool and I'm gonna give myself a fill color of pink and I'm gonna draw this. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I just want this one to be, let's say just a little bit smaller. Okay, so with that drawn, I can recycle the four buttonholes that I have over here, right? There's no reason to draw them all again. So I'll grab my selection tool. I will select these four buttonholes, which again are grouped, so I can select them all in one, um, just one click. And I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcuts, Command or Control C and Command or Control V. I don't really care about the edit paste in front that we did in the last video, because I just am gonna align these to a different button. So Command or Control V, I don't need to worry again about pasting in the exact same spot. Now, I'm gonna push these over to a line in the center, and let's just go ahead and do this correctly. I will grab these all with my selection tool again. I can just click and drag over a portion of that, and I will align and align just to make sure those are perfectly centered. Now I'll zoom in a little bit. So a couple things. One is I feel like these are quite large in relation to the actual circle, um, excuse me, the actual button. So I'm gonna select those. I'm gonna hold the shift key. Um, if you remember from the other videos, when we draw a circle, we hold the shift key to constrain the proportion when we draw the actual circle. And the same is true when we're resizing something. So to resize something, you just use the selection tool. You're gonna hover over one of the corners until you get a double-headed arrow. Um, within Illustrator, it doesn't even actually have to be one of the corners. Um, you can be one of the, the side sort of bounding box uh, little little boxes there. So I'm gonna hover over that till I see the double-headed arrow. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'll start resizing and you'll notice that constrains the proportion. If I don't hold the shift key, I can really kind of squash these in a direction that I might not want to. So I hold the shift key and I will resize those. Now a cool trick is to hold the option or alt key on a, on a PC. So the option key on a Mac or the Alt on a PC. So right now I'm holding the Shift and the Option Alt key. And what this does is it allows me to sort of resize these directly to the center point. So I won't have to realign these once I get my buttonholes to the right size. I'm gonna release the mouse and then release the Option and the Shift key. All right, now that looks a little bit better and I really like the size that that came out as. So a couple things I wanna talk about um, kind of above and beyond what I just showed you guys there. If you are perhaps having a problem where, let's say you drew a button and, or let's say this, you drew your four buttonholes, Commander Control C, Commander Control F to paste that in front. And to do this fast, we'll just do two buttonholes. Let's say you drew your two buttonholes and then you came back later and you said, okay, I'm gonna draw a green button. I'm gonna hold my shift key while I draw this to constrain the proportion and I will release the mouse and then release the shift key and my buttonholes disappeared. So within Illustrator, one of the essential things to understand is this, what we call a stacking order. And as you draw artwork, it is naturally stacked one object and then the next object and then the next object and then the next object. So by the natural stacking order of Illustrator, depending on what order you drew things, certain things are stacked on top of other things or are stacked under other things. And that can cause your artwork to be hidden if you draw something on top of something that, was, that then is gonna be below it 
so technically hidden. Um, it's actually still there. The buttonholes are still there. You just can't see them because the green circle is on top of them. So I wanna open up the layers panel to show you some cool ways to kind of navigate through this. I've got my layers panel down here. If you don't see yours, just come up to window layers. And within the layers panel, I'm gonna pull this over here so we can see a little bit better. By default, we just have one layer here. I'm going to click this little arrow sort of in between the, the layer icon and the blue bar. And what that's going to do is it's going to expose what are called sub layers. So if you're used to working within Photoshop, you know that as you draw, each object creates a new layer. In Illustrator, it does the same thing, but it creates them as sub layers. And so what you can see here is we've got all our various sub layers. So I've got my green circle. Um, I've got the two buttonholes that now are hidden underneath the green circle. You can see I've got this group, which is the four buttonholes. Uh, I think it's the one over here on the pink. And again, you can use this um, little arrow to sort of open up those sub layers. So you have total control over all the object objects within the layers panel. So one way you can expose the two buttonholes that are there is to come up to the green ellipse here, which is the button that you just drew. And I'm just simply gonna take this and I'm gonna click and drag it in between or excuse me, under those two buttonholes. Now I wanna make sure I don't drag it into this group. So I don't wanna hover over this group until it becomes a filled in blue bar. I wanna drag it just where I see that thick blue bar. And what that will do is it will move it underneath those two buttonholes, all right? So I didn't actually lose my artwork, I just had the stacking order incorrect. Now there's a different way to do that. So I'm just gonna come up to edit, undo. And with the buttonhole, excuse me, the green button selected, I can come up to object arrange and I have all these different options. So I can either send it backward, which will send it back one position. So if you watch the layers panel as I do it, sending it backward is going to send it one position back. It's gonna send it from here behind this buttonhole, but still on top of this other one. So send backward, sends it back one position versus object arrange, send to back, it's gonna send it behind every single object on my artboard. So send to back pushes it to the very, very back. Now, in this example, that was fine. It doesn't matter to me whether it's behind the yellow, um, excuse me, the, yeah, the yellow button or the pink button. All I really care is that it's behind these two. So it doesn't matter if I sent it all the way to the back um, or manually dragged it only behind these two ellipses here. But the point is that I wanna show you is that this visual of the layers panel will really help you control your artwork. And if anything ever happens and you're like, where'd that thing go? Or why did it disappear? Open up the layers panel and you can almost always sort of dissect what's going on by clicking through here and exposing all of your various sub layers. All right, now let's wrap this up with some sort of bigger, more grandiose completed object. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag around my yellow button. I'm actually gonna just delete that by hitting the delete key on my keyboard. I'm gonna do the same for my pink button, delete that. And now all I'm left with is this green button. So I'm gonna select all of that. I'm gonna group that because I wanna just treat that as one. So I'm gonna choose object group. And now that's all one single unit and that's great. I'll zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna just make a simple three button placket because this will teach you guys a couple tricks about creating stitching and getting your artwork evenly laid out with an illustrator. So with this button selected, I'm gonna choose Commander Control C, Commander Control F to paste in front. Again, this is all up here, um, excuse me, under the edit, edit paste in front, Commander Control F. So once I've done that, I can nudge this down or I can hold the shift key to nudge it down even further. I can also use my selection tool to move it. So I just hover anywhere directly on top of the object and I can use this to move it down. Okay, I'll do that one more time. Commander Control C, Commander Control F, and I will move that button down. Now as I'm moving it, it's very easy to kind of knock it out of position. With the smart guides on, you can usually easily have it snap uh, to the alignment. Alternatively, hold the shift key as you drag something and that will constrain either the vertical or the horizontal axis depending on which direction you drag. You can also drag directly out at a diagonal, um, just extra little trick there. 
So I'll drag down with the shift key. Again, I'll release my mouse and then release the shift key. And I've got my three buttons set up here. Now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna draw a really simple placket around this. And I wanna just do this to show you guys how to add some stitching. So I'm gonna come over to my ellipse tool. I'm gonna click and hold, and I wanna grab my rectangle tool. So I'll grab that, and I'm just gonna click and drag roughly around my three buttons to draw the placket. Now, what's happened is my buttons have disappeared. If you have your layers panel open still, you'll notice it's very easy to see why that happened. It's because this rectangle that I just drew, which has a white fill color, is hiding those buttons. So I can come in here and I can drag this and put it underneath those other buttons. Works very user-friendly, very sort of intuitive to just look at the stacking order within the layers panel. Again, I really encourage you to keep the layers panel open and to kind of play around in here to see what's going on. It will really tell you so much about your artwork. So from there, I can do a couple things. I wanna add stitching. And so what I'm going to do is use this feature called the offset path. I love this feature because it allows you to draw a new shape that is directly offset of the shape you currently have selected. So what it will do is it will draw a new rectangle that's perfectly uh, let's say maybe an eighth of an inch, depending on how what size we're really drawing at, offset from this rectangle. And the reason I like this so much is because if I were to just kind of wing it and I were to just kind of click and drag, I might not have this perfectly aligned to the edge of the placket. So I'm going to delete that. And the other thing you could do, I suppose, is with this selected, I'm gonna copy and paste it in front. So Command or Control C to copy, Command or Control F to paste it in front. And then I could kind of manually drag this and make it a little bit smaller, but that's tedious and it's not super accurate. I would then, you know, kind of do it up here and at the bottom too. So I'm gonna delete that. And with my selection tool, I will select the placket. And I'm gonna come up to Object, Path, offset path and this is a great feature not just for this simple example but for adding stitching on a lot of different artwork so with my offset path window open i turn the preview on and you'll notice that you get a new shape that's drawn perfectly offset 10 points from the original shape that you had so as I mentioned earlier, stitching is a great one, right? Your stitching might not always be on a straight, perfect rectangle. It might be on a curve. Um, and so this is a great feature to allow you to sort of offset your stitching an exact amount from that path. So with the offset here, um, this value, I'm just gonna drop my cursor in here and then I'm gonna use the arrow keys on my keyboard to change this. So you can see you can make it quite a bit larger. If you go all the way down to a negative value, that makes it smaller. So in this example, I wanna make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna use about a negative 10, I think looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK. And once I've done that, I'm gonna find my stroke panel and it's right over here. If you don't find yours, it's always under window, stroke. And within the stroke panel, I wanna do a couple things. The first is I wanna turn this into a dashed line. So that emulates my stitching. Now you can adjust the size of the dash in these fields down here. If you don't for some reason see this option coming up, make sure that your options are shown. So from the upper right corner of the stroke panel, you can click on the lines there, the drop down menu. And if you don't see all of those settings, chances are you need to just choose show options. Okay, that will then show you the dashed line option. Within here, as I said earlier, you can drop your cursor and use the arrow key to make your stroke, um, your excuse me, your dash either bigger or smaller. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here. I'm gonna show you one other setting that I really like to change for my stitching, and that is to have a round cap. And it just sort of gives it a nice round edge, which is a little bit more accurate for stitching. You can also change the gap the gap by default will set the same value as the dash size. And so if you want your stitching to look a little bit closer together, you wanna to change the gap to maybe let's say six. So I'll just hit six and then I can hit enter. And now you can see my stitching is a lot closer. So depending on again on the size that you drew, 
your placket, you, your settings may be way different than mine. Um, if you drew it really small, your settings are gonna be a lot smaller. If you drew it really big, they might be bigger. You just play around until you get something that looks good. The other thing I would typically get in the habit of doing is on my stitching is I'm gonna take the fill color off. So I'm gonna hit the um, red line here. So this is something we have not gone into yet, but if you wanna have an object that either has no fill color or no stroke color, you simply apply the none option. This is always available in your swatches panel as well. And so what this means is that this is, and I'll show you, we can drag it over here, you can see this does not have a fill color. It is only the black stroke. Now one other thing I will show you guys within Illustrator, the selection tool. When you're trying to select an object that does not have a fill color, you want to pay attention to the selection tool. If you're anywhere inside of this object and you're trying to move it, that doesn't actually work. You need to select it from the edge since there's no fill color, there's actually nothing to select on the inside. So hover over that until you have it selected and then you can move it around. So I know I see a lot of people getting frustrated. They're like, why can I not move it? And you've just got to select it from the edge. If it does have a fill color on it, you can select it from the middle. It does allow you to move around. And the reason you can't select it with no fill color is because there's actually just nothing there to select. So something that might seem really frustrating now, but you'll, I guarantee you'll get in the habit of how to do it and it'll, it'll just become second nature. So we would get this realigned with our buttons. And there you go, you've got a basic simple placket. Everything's aligned nicely. Your buttons are grouped accordingly. You've drawn some nice stitching and you're on your way. So keep playing around in Illustrator. I hope you're no longer feeling terrified or panicked or afraid. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. I love working with you. I am so Heidi. If you haven't yet, check out my site and subscribe to my email list. I give away tons of free videos and downloads for Illustrator for Fashion. Stuff you won't find here on YouTube, you'll only find it on my email list. I'd love to have you there. Introduce yourself to me and let me know what you're working on. Thanks again, guys. See you soon.